Thanks for listening to the Swearing In Podcast, where you'll hear the origin stories of those who chose to serve. So ground your gear, take a seat, and listen up. The Swearing In Podcast starts right now. Marty Smith, and this is the Swearing In Podcast. My guest today is Army Major Retired Annette Wittenberger. Annette grew up in Simi Valley, California, and graduated from Lorena High School in 1994. After attending community college for a year, she attended Arizona State University and joined their ROTC program. In 1999, She graduated with a B.A. in psychology and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Chemical Corps. She attended Officer Basic course at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Her first assignment was to the 16th Corps Support Group in Hanau, Germany, as a brigade chemical officer. In 2003, she returned to Fort Leonard Wood for the Officer Advance course. After being promoted to captain, she was assigned to the 4th Infantry Division at Fort Hood, Texas. She took command of Headquarters Headquarters Battalion and, in 2005, deployed to Camp Liberty, Iraq, for 12 months. After returning to Fort Hood, she again deployed in 2008 to Afghanistan as part of Task Force Duke. In 2010, after being promoted to Major, she was selected for In-Residence Command in General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. In 2011, she was assigned to Fort Bliss, Texas, as the 1st Infantry Division, Division Assistant Chemo, and eventually a Battalion XO. In 2014, she was assigned to JRTC G3 at Fort Polk, Louisiana. Annette retired from the Army on November 1, 2016. She also runs A Wild Ride Called Life, LLC. She's written a book entitled The Wall Between Two Lives, and has recently become an independent music artist. Now this concludes your pre-brief, so let's get on with the interview. Today I'm joined by Army Major Retired, Annette Wittenberger. Annette, thanks for reaching out and thanks for coming on the podcast and telling your story. I really appreciate that. Thank you. (laughs) So how did this big military career get started were you in high school or what well first off where'd you grow up at i grew up in simi valley california that's in southern california in ventura county and uh it was a small town back then and joining the military as a female in my family was just not the norm it was just not nothing that my parents wanted me to do did you have military history in your family you know, I found out that I did decades later. Um, oh, jeez, really? I didn't. I didn't even know because my grandfather wasn't a. He he passed away when my father was very young, uh-huh. and so I didn't really know about him at all. And then I had an uncle on my father's side as well, who was served in the same division that I did. But again, I didn't know till later because we wow. just didn't talk. We didn't talk about it. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, so I was like, man, I wish I would have known. But now I know that I still had a little part of me that just knew. I don't know. I just knew that I wanted to join the Army. I just didn't know how I was going to do it. Well, what high school did you go to then? I went to an all-girl Catholic high school. Wow. (laughs) Um, In Thousand Oaks. It was called Lorena High School. (laughs) Lorena High School. When did you graduate? In 94. Okay, so... You're uh, you're sitting there now. My experience was as I was I starting my senior year, and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do, right? You know, I thought I was going to play football. All five foot eight of me, I thought I was going to play college football. I was not going to play college football. <laughs> but my mom, out of the blue, was like, "Hey, why don't you go apply for this ROTC scholarship?" I was like, "What's that?" And she goes, "I don't know. Just apply for it." And so I did. 
and that's what started me. It wasn't anything that I was planning on doing. It just kind of came out of the blue. So, and you went to ROTC yourself, right? I did. So how did that come about for you? When I was in high school, I, I had a friend who enlisted in the army and of course in an all girls school that's like wow that was so oh, cool oh yeah yeah right and uh, so i did i had a, a recruiter come to the house and I, the boy i was dating was with me we were sitting at the table the recruiter's there and he had the paperwork out and i was like wow <laughs> i was like i don't know if i could do this <laughs> i was so nervous so i passed on it Okay. But in, in the back of my mind, I was like, I have to figure out how the hell I'm going to do this. So when I applied to the school that I did, I had I wanted to make sure they did have an ROTC program so that I could test it out in my mind. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did the ROTC program, but in my mind, I was only going to do three years. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I was like three years and I'm done. I'll just try it. Yeah. Yeah, Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, they had that. I, I'm trying to remember back then, right? Because they had plans where you could do like a couple and then you got to make a decision if you want to go forward with it or something like that around your Exactly. Yes. So it was called MS1, MS2, MS3. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I remember that. So at that point, after my two, because I, I was um, a transfer student because I, I went to community college first. Okay. So by the time I transferred to Arizona State University, I was already a sophomore. So at that time, I didn't have, I didn't have all those years that I thought I was going to have to test it out. At that time, they're like, "All right, so <laughs> you're, you're in." <laughs> so I, I, you got to make a decision. I was like, "Okay, <laughs> let's just oh, do it." Just like that, huh? I did. I had no. Uh, I was always that person who just took it year by year. I, I really didn't have a plan in my life. I no, didn't. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. I just didn't. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> you know, that's not uncommon. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I think the rarity is when somebody goes, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I was like, right, really? right. Wow, yeah, good not, for you. <laughs> not me. <laughs> well, me neither. Even though it's, as I was going through ROTC, I was like, nah, am I really going to do this? I could do reserves and just bail out of this thing, right? Exactly. Uh, okay, so you're in, and now you're a sophomore, so you kind of missed a year of that. So now you're learning to march and all that. I yep, I did it. There was just a few of us girls. Oh, yeah, um, so yeah, because yeah, you know, you, yeah, it wasn't common to have all the females uh, there at that time. So I did. Uh, I tried everything. I tried. Um, we had the you know the early morning runs that I thought yeah. were terrible, and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> And just, I uh, just testing it all out. I I didn't party like normal college students do because I was very I was terrified of showing up hungover like some of my friends did, and I said I am not doing that. Well, you I also got not. that that Catholic school background too. That's that gonna, too. So that's going to guilt just... you into not doing the wrong <laughs> thing, right? So I didn't I didn't have um I mean I had fun in college but not. I was just, yeah, I barely, barely made it through. So I was like, I am not Aww. showing up like this. And yeah, yeah. So really, it really was good for me, actually. <laughs> did you, me. did you find uh, that there was any time where you like, this really isn't for me? Or did you just like, I, I'm taken to it like a duck to water kind of thing? No, there was times where like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> I'm, am I really going to do this? And and that's when I met my husband my senior year and he oh. was in already and I was like, Well, all right, let's let's just do this. Well, that makes it a little easier. Yeah, I was like, All right. <laughs> but as you're going through, right, you get your sophomore or your junior year, now you're being prepped for camp, right? Between your oh, junior God. and senior year, right? Yes. Your big assessment. Yes. yes. So, and you I, I think you said you went up to Fort Lewis? I did, yes. Okay. So was I. Um were you uh what what do you think about that i think it was what six weeks i think it was six weeks i think it felt like forever i hated it <laughs> oh, i hated it i look i never went camping as a kid we didn't go camping oh, outside yeah so i did to, to, to have my first camping experience there was just <laughs> like, are right. you i was freezing my ass off um it rained all the time there were wet, at, wet. there yeah. were <laughs> There were ant hills that were like yeah. four feet high, 
it was just dramatic for me. <laughs> well, yeah, you dirty, learn, you showering out in the fields. You didn't stay out in the field long, but still, if you're not used to it, right? yeah, yeah, no, it was so like what I hate. I wanted to come home. Oh, so many, so many times, and my boyfriend, that is my husband now, he's like, no. <laughs> And he was already in, right? Yeah, he was already in. He's like, you cannot quit. You have to do it. It's <laughs> like, what are I, you talking about? You're already there. You're not going to bail out on this. I know. I think I cried as soon as I landed in the airport. Oh, no. I was like, what am I doing here? Yeah, it was terrible. Terrible. <laughs> well, good to see that commitment at its highest level there. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but I you must have done it. okay. You got through it, right? I did, and what's funny is I actually went back and I volunteered. Oh, jeez, did you really? Yep, I did. I went back to be a to be a volunteer so I could help the other the other newbies get through it. So did you feel this, uh, did you feel accomplished once you finished it? God, did you feel I a little did. more confident. I did. I was like, okay, yeah. man, I don't know how I got through it, but Jesus, I did. I did it. <laughs> but good enough to even go back and say, look. You know, the it's not so you know, constantly some of these other people and tell them it's not so bad you can get through it, right? Yes. Yeah. That's pretty <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Did they just keep you there after your cycle was complete and you just stayed on? Yes. Oh, yes. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um okay, so you got through that. You got your camp score. Now you're uh getting into your senior year. You're strutting around as a big what were you as a cadet? What was your highest rank? I think I got to captain. That was it. I don't even remember. I just remember having that dot and being made fun of. That <laughs> <laughs> stupid dot. The pip. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, did you go to any schools? Did they offer you airborne school or anything like that through the oh. other summers? Oh, yes. So I was offered either airborne school or to go to training in Italy. Wow. And I Jeez. said, shit, I'm going to Italy. Did you but really? I went to Italy, but guess what happened? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> as soon as I got to Italy, I was assigned to an airborne unit that oh, that was going to training in Grafenvir. You went with them? I had to. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I, I had my first experience in Grafenvir. I didn't get to. I got to hang out in Italy for like four days. Yeah. And, yeah. and that was it. So I went to Grafenvir. We took that nine hour drive and I was like, oh, my God. But I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't jump with them. So I was not I, I was frowned upon by those who didn't understand that I was just a cadet in training. They were like, you can't jump, you're a cadet. And what do you do? Why are you wearing the airborne beret? Cause I had- Oh yeah. Oh, that was terrible. Yes, 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 yes. I didn't go over well at all. Were there other uh, females there? No. Mm -mm. Oh jeez. <laughs> so who that was-, was Who was in crazy. charge of all these assignments? That's crazy. I know. So I felt so out of place. I did appreciate the lieutenant that I had a shadow because I got to see, you know, what what it entailed. And it got to be it was really cool to be around like the real army guys, you know, but I didn't get to I didn't get to really participate in all those things because I wasn't I wasn't trained. So I was like, well, this sucks. But <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the where, what, where was it in Italy? Did you go to? Did you go to Vicenza? It, it, Vicenza. Yep. Oh, OK. Yeah. So yeah, how long, how long did you spend out there? Two weeks. Wow. Two weeks. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, you didn't really want to go to camp. You made it through that <laughs> and you go out to Italy and they don't want you there. Holy <laughs> cow. Not a, off to a roaring start, I suppose. I know. And I still stayed in. <laughs> yes. Yes, you did. Uh, okay. You graduate, you get, uh, pinned on who who pinned you on um my gosh i don't even remember your husband I, no because he was in germany already oh i don't remember oh boo. that's so sad yeah i don't remember so, uh you salute the first sergeant your first salute give him a silver dollar yeah no i didn't have that oh no <laughs> i didn't have that i really but you know i didn't really have amazing mentors 
<laughs> well, Growing yeah, up. and that happens. Yeah, that yes. happens. So I didn't either. Okay. I yeah. didn't either. It was mostly my peers, but nobody ever took me under their wing. And that's probably yeah. why I only did 10 years and I got out. So, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, okay, now you're in. You're, you're, you get commissioned, regular Army commission, reserve yes. commission? Yes. A regular army. And what branch? Well, my very, very last pick of the draw, I got chemical. Chemical <laughs> core. Yeah. But, but I was branch detailed military intelligence. So you had to go do your four years? And then well, uh, yeah. So I was chemical, but then by the time they offered me, they by the time they said, okay, your branch detail is up, you have to go do that, I had to turn it down because I had a newborn. Oh, that's so, pretty cool. They let you turn it down. I Well, it took me two tries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had to really fight for that one. So, yeah, I got lucky because otherwise I'd have to come back to the States, and it was just a whole, whole mess. So... Uh, yeah, so I saved wow, chemical my chemical time. core. I'm I'm looking forward to hearing about this. So where was your <laughs> where was your OBC your basic course? Oh, you know Fort Leonard Wood. <laughs> Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. God, how how long was your uh, OBC? Ten months, nine months, ten months. Wow, like was it oh, yes. really? Oh yes. Holy. Super fun. <laughs> okay, so what year is this? You're going off there. Ninety nine, because ninety eight was camp so 99 okay so yeah 99 wow mm -hmm. wow yes uh, you know there's there's so much of the army that doesn't know what chemical core does other than <laughs> hey go go test it so we can take our masks off that's that's <laughs> about all we know you guys do um so what is your obc what is what is what did they train you on other than you know did you go into like chemical composition stuff did you go into rads what did what exactly did you guys do so we did we went into a live nerve agent chamber oh you got to spend 24 hours in that thing don't you um i don't think it was 24 hours oh, okay. but we did do several days in there and it was very Wow. Oh, it was so stressful because if you touched your mask the wrong way or you did something wrong, they would take you out. It was like this whole emergency <gasps> catastrophe God. thing that so it, we did have one girl. I think she touched her mask and they, it was it was everybody was like, oh, my God, what's going to huh. happen? And so, yeah, we it, it was a it was very good training. Um, but, yes, it was it was stressful because you didn't yeah. want to you didn't want to get. You didn't want to touch it, but it, it is amazing to see what agents can do to to you, and you know when you use that M nine paper and, and all that sure. stuff that nobody cares about. But yeah, that that was interesting. <laughs> I remember reading about I can't remember I, maybe one of the MBC courses we had to go through or something like that, where they're where they're talking about uh, nerve agents, but the worst were the blister agents. Oh yeah, that was horrific to see blisters the size of frisbees on people's bodies. I was like, it's oh, it's terrible. Especially they made us watch those videos on what it would do to animals, and you're like, oh my oh, gosh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I vaguely remember that. I was so watching them start twitching and stuff. I was like, oh, this is just <laughs> terrible. It is terrible. <laughs> what was supposed to be the mission of the Chemical Corps? We never, I never understood that either. Well, I mean, anytime there was a, or not anytime, but if there happened to be some kind of chemical warfare, like there, I mean, there has been things in the news that have happened years ago. That's when we would come out and make sure that, uh, you know, we weren't, we were either in the zone of where we were not going to be affected or you were going to be affected, made sure that you were trained to ha properly put on that mask and that mop suit. Yeah, you know, we, yeah. we all hated wearing that, but oh, yeah. um, you know, at the end of the day, that's basically the only thing that would be able to protect you if it were to be that, if it were to come yeah, to that. Sure. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, my career didn't. I would do some training here and there. I was in charge of it, but other than that, I did everything else. But that. yeah, of course, right, <laughs> of course. So you graduate? Is it still ninety eight? Or are we? Oh, uh, no. So oh, I graduated. 99? 99, yeah. Two, it goes into 2000. Okay. Um, 
and I'm in Germany at this time. In what's 2000. your first What's your first duty station? So I was in Hanau, Germany. Hanau, and, wow. Yes, yeah. It's, poor thing is shut down now, but yeah. I was with the 16th Corps Support Group. I was a brigade chemical officer. Oh wow! Very as a lieutenant. As a lieutenant, yep, yeah. Jeez. And and I was pregnant. <laughs> oh man! So it was like all. Oh, how to make a, a good first impression. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like so, Italy all over again, right? Good Lord. I know. I, I God tested me a lot throughout my career. So it was just, but it was, I mean, it was, I enjoyed it. It, it, it definitely was um, my first experience at how to react when there's counterterrorism. Like when September 11th happened, I was in Germany and we had to lock down the, the 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 base and or the concern however what they called oh, yeah, it back then that's right that's right and, yeah and pull 24 hour shifts with our weapons so it was it was very interesting at that time sure yeah. um yeah well and not to mention like everybody in the military was freaked out it was like what are we gonna do what's going on right 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 like, i didn't even yeah my friend happened to message me and say did you hear what happened which was 24 hours before we found out. So it was just, oh, yeah, it was, geez. It was wow. crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's right. No real live news back then. Uh, no, no. So, wow. Uh, okay. So you're over. In, well, I guess, I guess two good things out of that. Uh, you being a brigade level is that at least you get some visibility with some higher ranking, but right. I would imagine that you also don't get, anybody really taking care of you if you're at the brigade level right yeah not really we it, it was almost like i was supposed to know what to do when i was yeah. i mean i was brand new <laughs> i mean where was your captain at I, um he was already transitioning out oh jeez i was replace i was replacing him oh jeez so, yeah and, and it was it, it was it was so it's just weird how things work because there was a chemical company that was 50 feet from that unit and I never got assigned to it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like, it's right there. I should be with my people, but no, you know, that whole sarcastic phrase of, well, the army in its infinite wisdom, right? No, oh, seriously. Yeah. I will never that. understand why, <laughs> but you know what? It's fine. <laughs> Well, if you push through that, I mean, if you look at some of those things and you endured them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe that made you a better officer, better, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I did, I did learn a lot. I, I really did. Well, you had uh, to learn it, to survive, really, for a but while. Yeah, it really did. So, yes. Did you, did they deploy you at all? I was about to PCS back to the States when my unit was going to, Af to Afghanistan. They didn't stop last year or anything? They, they uh, let the you PCS? Only, the only reason why I was not stop loss was because my husband got orders to come back to the States. <laughs> oh, so you had joint spouse. Yes. So that's the only, otherwise I would have found myself in Afghanistan during that yeah. big, yeah. So. Well, that would have yep. been, yeah, the, well, 2003, 2004, somewhere around there? It was, yeah, 2003. Okay. Yes. God, that was a tumultuous time because they just started Iraq too. So yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, what a terrible time. Yes, for sure. Uh, okay, you come back to the states. Where'd you guys go? Uh, Leonard Wood for the captain's career course. Oh, you went back for the advanced course. Yes, we went back. <laughs> <laughs> well, this time, you. this time with two kids, three and one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, wow, Germany treated you right. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was fun too because now we're both going to the course at the same time. We have the two kids, and we're both doing our master's program at the same time as well. And so, of course, you got to get that master's degree. Right? You want to you want to uh, test your nerves. That was that was the time to do it because wow, man, how did you have time for anything at that time? I that I don't know. I really don't know. Wow, it's good to, <laughs> good thing you're in your twenties because you wouldn't have the energy to do that nowadays. Boy. Oh. No, I would have need naps, several naps throughout the day. Back then, you don't get naps, so that's true. You get you get 
Well, well it's very much like the army. You sleep when you can, right? Exactly. <laughs> How long was your advanced course? That was about the same, about 10 was months. Was it really? Golly. Now, are you captain yet? Uh, really? So cap, captain, and then I go to... Did you get promoted uh, to captain at Leonard Wood? Um, I believe I got captain right after that because I went to Fort Hood. Oh, you did? <laughs> yes, Fort Hood. I was there from 91 to about 93. Okay. I know, I know Fort Hood. <laughs> what division were you assigned to? Fourth ID. Oh, see, Fourth I ID. was there when there was second armored and first calf. And then they moved oh, a whole bunch yeah. of stuff around. So They did. They tried to squeeze everybody in. Fourth ID, first calf. Um, well, first calf armor. ruled that. First calf ruled the oh, first. So, I know, un- unfortunately. Yeah, they got all, <laughs> they got all the money. They got their Stetsons and Spurs they're run, running around with. They did they have the did. best. O- they did have the best oak club. I think Fort Hood had a better oak club than any place I've ever seen. So, oh, <laughs> well, they did yeah, back was, then. So I don't know if no, it was anymore. It was not. I mean, it was. I, I haven't experienced many oak clubs, but I mean, it was decent. We did go there a lot. <laughs> Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, Fort Hood. I was here for, I was at Fort Hood for six years from 2004 to 2010. Wow. Yes, yes. How'd, how'd you manage that? Did you do a PCA in there somewhere? Um. Yes. And then my husband was doing his master's program. So oh, he okay. Got, so yeah. He got yeah. to stay longer. Yes. So uh, you went to fourth ID. You remember the unit you went to? Um, it was Devardi back then, and then turned into 41st Fires Brigade. Wow. I was an artillery guy. That's, yes. that's kind of eerie. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> yes, um, artillery. So you're always, so, so far, you've always been sliced off to a maneuver unit or something like that. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. frustrating. Um, the old yes. camo. We're all, <laughs> camo, get over here. <laughs> But that's exactly what it sounded like. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the second lieutenant camo too. The guy was hilarious, but he took a lot of abuse. He took a lot of abuse. Um, okay, now you're coming up on uh, CGSC or Cast Cube or something like that. I did. I got very. I was very fortunate to be able to do the residency at uh, Fort Leavenworth. Oh, very nice. Kansas. So we did that for uh, 11 months. Wow. And that's awesome. I know I did. I really loved Leavenworth, actually. Very small, but just very homey. I yeah. love that place. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've heard nothing but good things about uh, Leavenworth just because the nature of what yes. you're doing there, you can concentrate. You know, it's not uh, it's not a right. bustling maneuver base, you know, so. Right. Yes. Bit, yeah, it was bit. very nice. So yeah. yeah. Uh, was that for uh, C? That was for CGSE. Yes. All right. So let's figure this out. Let me see if I can figure this out. And we're talking. This got to be 2011 by now. Almost 2012. Yes. Yes. So 2011. You got to. Where did you make major at? At. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. At Fort Hood. Before I went to see Oh, before you went. I got oh, promoted. Good for you. Yes, yes. You don't have to do yes. that, that interminable 10 year wait or whatever it is. So that's pretty no, good. No, no. <laughs> that's pretty yes. good. Yes. Uh, okay, now where are you off to after Leavenworth? El Paso, <laughs> Fort Bliss. <laughs> the appropriately named Fort Bliss. Bliss, what's your what's your assignment down there? Now you got to be like an ops officer or something, right? So I went to first ID. I was a division ass- assistant camo down there until I took battalion. I was a battalion XO. <clears throat> oh, nice, nice. Yes, so I love that. I did that. So I, I was there for let's see. I did battalion XO for two years. That's cool. That's a good job. Yes, I actually really loved it. 
and uh yeah so let's see i left in 2014 and then and then went to where did i go to el paso oh fort polk oh yes <laughs> I went to Fort Polk. <laughs> I was at Fort Polk before JRTC. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. When I was I was with the 5th Infantry Division down there and it okay. was it was a real shithole. And then J- <laughs> and then JRTC came in and they poured a ton of money into Fort Polk. But before oh, that, good. it was I mean, we had guys living in those North Fort barracks that were all condemned. Oh because my god! No spaces, yeah. It was it was a it was the dregs, um, but I don't think it's improved much. Even though they poured a whole ton of money in it, it's still, <laughs> still it's still work. you're still sweating at you know eight o'clock in the morning. So, oh god, yes. Fort Polk. What was your assignment at Polk? I worked in the G three at the JRTC headquarters. Oh wow, that's a cool assignment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was it. Was really cool because I got to see what happens behind the scenes. The, the running around with their head cut off, trying to make sure the training was conducted oh, and yeah. conducted in the right way. So yes, right, right. That was fun. That's did where they, I retired from. Did they have uh, like NTC? I was I was big NTC rotation guy because I was artillery and we were mechanized so we were heavy so we always went out to ntc but did jrtc have similar to ntc did they have like a standing op for yes so you probably had to oversee those guys too i i did not but we had people that did oh, in okay. this in, in our section yeah we had people that focused on that suffice it to say there's a lot of moving pieces when you're trying to set training up for these rotating units coming in oh my god yes so much so wow. so many moving parts that I can't. Yes, I'm glad I just had to do mine. <laughs> uh, well, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about how you got to retirement? Yeah. So <clears throat> I I got passed over twice, <sighs> and and they gave me the the option to continue on in the reserves or the or the guard and and I right. took my 30 days to make that decision I actually went and talked to a recruiter and he was like ma'am doesn't even make sense just take the retirement I was like okay so they were offering you early retirement they did That's they offered cool. me it was actually really cool I, I I am very lucky that I got to have that so yeah, yeah I have retirement and that was yeah. it if it was early retirement, is that a lesser percentage or is that how they work that? <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, it's it's a lesser percentage, but nonetheless it's it's yeah, it's retirement. You got retirement, so, you got all the benefits that come along with that. So I do, I do. Did that uh did they ever did you ever get any feedback on why you got passed over? I did not. They're not really good at telling you that. That's true. They just <laughs> here's the list. Exactly. You want it. Right. You didn't you didn't make it and yeah. you didn't make it again. Sorry. And, and yeah, so yeah. Well that that and forgive me for asking, you don't have to go into it, but it kind of burned you up a little bit, didn't you? Didn't I was I was I was um how do you put it? Very traumatized. I was very sad. Very, yeah. very upset. I, I was angry. I was like, what the F? Um Cause I really, you know, worked my ass off and gave well, up. You, th- you think you check all the right boxes. You think right. you're doing all the right assignments and everything. Right. And, and that's where a mentor would really be helpful. You know, right. You know, oh, this is why. But I, but surprisingly, at that level, uh, there's not many mentors. At least for at least for me, I, I found. No. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. I I never was that type of person who was trying to get in with anybody you know I was just trying to I was just trying to survive man I I was trying to be dual military and raise kids and absolutely so I I just didn't have time for that the politics of it so yeah it sucked it sucked really bad yeah (laughs) when you get up to that level I mean I only got up to captain but you could already see the politics of you know do you get this you need this assignment to really look good and if you don't get that assignment well and yeah. that's that's where politics. I was like, God dang it, man, this sucks. 
Yeah. Like, why does it have to be that way? Because what if you don't get that assignment? Who are you going to burn? You know, and, right. and I was, wasn't trying to do that. So, yeah. So when was your retirement? Uh, it, it is November 1st, 2016. 2016. Wow. Yep. You're coming yeah. up on almost seven years, huh? I know. I went by really fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. I know. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's get into some of this other stuff that you did. What'd you do when you first got out? I sulked. <laughs> Fair. Fair. I enough. sulked. I was mad at the world, and I was very, very depressed. Yeah. I, in my mind, I thought that, you know, I'd come back and I'd work as a GS or a contractor, and I wanted to work in the G three shop, and I had all these plans to get back to soldiers, but I couldn't do it. I was yeah. so mad and um i didn't do anything i i I was supposed to do a resume my husband kept asking me when you do a resume and i was like i'm not i'm I'm not just i'm not (laughs) sure well you had your livelihood taken away yeah i was like screw it yeah (laughs) i'll figure it out yeah why do i want to go back into this trap that just kicked me out exactly i'm like screw all of you i'm not doing this (laughs) yeah absolutely totally understandable (laughs) No, uh, but I, I, I did. I fell into a really dark depression because I, I think that's when I started realizing that all those, all the years that I had put in trying to be somebody that I wasn't, that they trained me to be, and I didn't know who I was. And I, and I know you've no, heard a lot of people say yeah. that we just we lose our identity. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know who I was. Well, your identity is a job. And yeah. When you lose the job. Uh, and I've talked to many veterans, and I think uh, you know when people first get out, even if it's under good conditions, you're still you've lost a whole ton of structure that you've molded yourself to be a part of, and now you don't have uh, you don't have the structure, you don't have the friends, you don't have the the uh, satisfaction of your work or your job, and then you're just like, go be a civilian, and you're like, how? <laughs> right. I don't know how. Exactly. So I, I, I retired and the next day I'm still living on Polk. I'm still surrounded by my people, but I cannot be with them anymore. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. this sucks. Right. Because I, I lived across the street from JRTC, so I knew there was PT formation, but I didn't have to go to it anymore. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is this is hard. Yeah. 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 I mean, you, you don't want to be in it. No, <laughs> Nobody, no. Yeah, there's not a lot of people look forward to PT, but uh, to know that you're excluded from it, that's yeah. kind of that's kind of that hurts. Yeah, and I was stuck there for well, until my daughter graduated college. I was or high school, so I was still stuck there for another six, seven months. Um, and your husband was he? close to retiring at that time or no 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 he had to go to korea and he came he came back for her high school graduation but yeah he was gone so she so you're out of the army begrudgingly because you didn't want to you're living on an army post (laughs) your husband's not there and you got all the sounds of what you used to do and you're not part of it anymore. Yeah. I can see yeah. that's, mentally that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. So how'd you dig yourself out of that hole? I had, I was, I'm still friends with a, a lot of my soldiers. And so I, um, they reached out and they're like, you know, how are you doing? And I'm not, I'm not doing good at all. And they told me that, they they struggle with the transition process as well yeah. and we talked about you know how that the ache the, the transition program is just not where it's supposed to be so I, I knew that i needed to voice these inner thoughts because i was going to explode and so yeah. Yeah. i started using you know social media to do it and then i got some backlash on that and so i was like oh, okay geez. All right, so I won't post it on Facebook. So I'm just going to create a website. <laughs> really? Okay. I'm going to create a blog. I'm going to create something that is for me and for anybody else who is feeling the same way. And then it just started from there. 
And your was that your website blog, A Wild Ride Called Life? Yes. Which is still out there. It is. So if we just search that, for anybody who's listening, if you just search A Wild Ride Called Life, it'll bring it up? Yes. Very cool. It's still there. Who did you get backlash from? I'm curious. Oh, just some uh, other people who just didn't um, who doesn't use social media that way oh. you know you're gonna always have people like why would yeah. you put your business out there and, and i can understand from their point of view but from my point of view i had nowhere else to go sure so i thought sure. let me just communicate these feelings here and so you know it's it, it's whatever it, it, it's i'm i was a little frustrated then but now I see that it just pushed me to do more. Yeah. You can't well, tell me no. <laughs> so well, I'm going to do yeah, something well, else. <laughs> uh, a strong woman who, who <laughs> battled her way through the army for 16 years. <laughs> yeah. Why would you tell you no? So, <laughs> so you said it grew into other things. So what else did it grow into? Yes. Yeah, so after the, the website in 20, so 2016, 2019 is when I decided to start a podcast. And okay. I know you and I were discussing, you know, just starting it. That was hard because I, I'm not a professional. I don't yeah. make it. I don't make money off of it. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I right. knew I had to do it. So and, and I and I changed my cover art like five times. I I, I, I just. <laughs> I just wanted to figure out how the hell to do it. And so in the beginning, you know, I was just me talking and then I was like, you know what, I'm going to open it up to other military affiliated people. But then I actually had non-military affiliated people come out to me, come reach out to me and ask me, can I be on your podcast? Because I have a story too. And I was like, you know what? Yes, let's do this because the truth we hide is not just for military it's for anybody and and that's how it started i just huh. started talk, talking to all kinds of people who were sex trafficked who had been in abusive relationships who wow. who just needed an outlet yeah. yeah and i wanted i wanted to create that safe space for them so i did start out with just audio and recent well not recently last year i started to do live oh so wow we, so we just we just go we just yeah. go we just yeah. live stream it because well one you know how hard it is to edit podcasts oh, it takes forever <laughs> yeah. right. i i couldn't i couldn't do it anymore i'm like you know what we're just gonna go we're gonna be raw i'm gonna have my dogs in the background they're gonna bark but you know this is just real life so that uh, so that's what i did i think you might have been you might have been right in the trend because that's that's the way people go now i mean there's uh uh there's a, a real uh honesty when you're doing it live yeah you know and you get yeah. the pauses and you get the thinking about things and you get the real reactions to stuff and it's really attractive to watch <laughs> <laughs> you're just gonna get the weird me so it's this is how <laughs> i decide to do it <laughs> and so for those who are listening this is the truths we hide podcast and where's it available at it's everywhere. everywhere? You, can, okay. you can even go on Alexa and ask for it. Wow. I know. <laughs> that is fantastic. I can only dream about doing that. So. <laughs> you can. I will show you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fair enough. I'll take the tips. Right? <laughs> I just keep plodding along here, and I'm like, huh, it'd be nice to have more people listen to it. But, oh well. uh, when did you start writing the book? in 2021 it took me about a year to write no in 2020 it took me about a year to write it and in 21 is when i uh when it was released you self-publish i did not i went with an independent publisher oh okay another veteran who owns his company or the ceo of the company and he uh he helped me he helped me do it so wow uh, yeah. The book is called "The Wall Between Two Lies." Yes. And what is, is it? A autobiography, or it, it is. It is. It talks about my childhood trauma, my military trauma, oh, the dark, the dark parts. But and then in the end, you know how to give you hope. Good. 
um, yeah. to get through it all. Yeah. yeah. That's great. How's it doing? I, I mean, it's still, up. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a New York Times bestseller, but it's okay. <laughs> I think you got to grease certain people to get on the New York Times bestseller. I, I think you do too, but you know what? It's fine. It, it's fine because it's still there and, and whoever gets to read it and if it helps them, then that's, that's what it's supposed to do. So, uh, yeah. What, how has that branched you out now? Are you working with other veterans groups or have they tried to network through you? I do try to do a lot of collaborations with other nonprofits yeah. or with other with other people who just want to help, you know, with yeah. suicide prevention and mental health. I That's my biggest thing. And so I, I will do whatever I can to help promote them or work together. That, that's just what I want to do, because it's, you know, the military offers resources, but there's so many other resources that people don't know about there is and it, it, i, I want to make a statement and i want your reaction to that statement my right. my statement is is that as many things as there is out there there still has to be some way to reach out to an individual and i know that's impossible to reach out to every individual but to try to reach out to them and virtually pull them off the couch and say come and get involved i want i want you to be involved with this do you find that difficulty in trying to reach some people? I do. And I think that's why I do so many things because I've been told you need to find a niche. You can't do it all. No. Well, again, you can't tell me no. So <laughs> I'm going to, if I need to do a podcast, if I need to write a book, if I need to be a speaker, sure. yeah. if I need to do all these things to try to reach them, then that's what I'm going to do. That's great. I mean, that's, a, that's awesome. Do you have uh, your own business or nonprofit? I do. So a wild ride call life is, is intended to do that um, because I am a speaker and I oh, am a, okay. men, I, I'm a mentor as well. So like I said, I will do everything I can to try to reach people. And so that, yeah, that's. Are you your that's, own agent? I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, that gets busy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm, I, it's just me. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's busy. I mean, when you get p things scheduled, that's probably the easy part. It's the sales piece that you have to go out and reach out to people and say, hey, I can yeah. help. I can speak. I can do whatever you need. So, Right. Right. Wow. That's that's a lot. I mean, that's that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, and, I, and I'll put all these links uh, for your for your your book, your podcast, your website. I'll put all the links in the description. So anybody who listens to it can, they'll, they'll all be there. Um, the, uh, what's, what's next for you then? Uh, let's see. So the, the latest thing that I did was, uh, went to music school. <laughs> uh, I, I did this very intense six month program with the musicians Institute out of Hollywood, California. And I, graduated with the ability to be a songwriter yeah. and and a producer and so i'm not the next taylor swift which is fine <laughs> but um i hope to one day write as as well as she does and so that's that's what i'm doing now do you have a certain focus for your songwriting what my daughter and i did was she as part of my project for school was I had to write a song. And so my daughter was going through a very, very bad breakup and I invited her to help me with this project and I believe it helped her. And so that's, that's what we did was we used her heartbreak, her words, her feelings and yeah. we, to write this song. And, and that's what I want to do is I want to bring people's uh, feelings into it and write oh. for them and, and turn that that pain into a something that's that's beautiful to a song well they say you're not like taylor swift but i think she made a career <laughs> out of breakup songs so. she did she's so cool but yeah i mean uh, she's it's taken her many many years and i'll be well into my 50s early 60s before i get that far but i will do what i can for now let's get to the let's get to the fun questions all right. I always try to ask a couple of questions. Um, the first one is what was your biggest ass chewing in the military? Oh God. 
I have so many. Okay, <laughs> me too. I did, I did too. Don't worry. I'll, oh. edit, I'll edit out all the all the size and thinking. <laughs> I, I I think uh, missing a meeting. I I don't know why. I just didn't put on the calendar correctly. So if I miss a meeting, they miss a meeting. It's all jacked up. Sure. Um, and so I and I think the worst thing is having uh, your boss not yell at you very when they speak to you very calmly but in a matter that makes you feel like absolute shit i think i'd rather him yell at me yeah right right <laughs> just yell at me don't talk to me like that because i feel worse so yeah that's that has to be the worst thing ever is that how he, is that uh do you have a particular supervisor or somebody who was able to do that to you yeah he did that i when i was stationed at fort hood yeah, oh, really? it was the worst. Oh, I, I just I felt like absolute crap after that. Um, but yeah, I was it was here and I was with the Devardi. So ah. I was I was a captain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are the worst because they make you feel about two <sighs> inches tall. And you're like, I Damn, I don't wanna I I wanna do better, but I hate this guy now and I don't want to Ex- do better for him, but I have to. Exactly. <laughs> it's just uh, yes. Yeah, I know, you know what you're talking about. Those, those, <laughs> the, some people have a real knack for it. Yes. <laughs> okay, now the now the good one, the 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 good question. Um, what was your proudest moment in the army? Oh, being a company commander. Oh yeah, that's right. oh, I really loved it. I and and I and this is when, it was a new unit under the fires brigade. It was an uh, BSB. Oh no, HHBN and um we what's, went to HH, Iraq. what's headquarters, Head, headquarters? Oh sorry. Headquarters and headquarters battalion. Okay. And we went to Iraq for twelve months and came back. Wait, we skipped all over that. You didn't even tell me about that. I forgot. I don't know how I forgot about it, but it was <laughs> I don't know how. Um but yes, and I got to do company command for twenty two months. Oh man, that is awesome. Oh, it really was. I so love that. Your company was just HHBN. That was a it, company. It was. It was HHBN, and um, you know, I, all the the colonels and the majors and everybody higher above me was in my company. Right, so right, to try to make team. them try to make them do a urinalysis uh, or a P, uh, uh. or a PT test was like pulling teeth. <laughs> oh, you're just constantly chasing those guys. Yeah, yeah you're like, come on, sir. <laughs> come on yeah and they, they see you at the door and they're like oh my god so- i know yeah I'm, i was such a pain in the ass but yeah that was um so was wh- where did you say this was at fort hood it was at fort hood yep and uh can do you mind telling i might have to cut and paste this but do you mind telling me how the deployment went the deployment went well our mission wasn't as um we were in the green zone uh, we did get to live in trailers, so it wasn't, you know, like we were in tents on the what side year, of a mountain. What year was this? It was 2005, 2006. So where did you go? Oh, geez, that's right. That's getting close to the surge, right? Yes, we were in um, Camp Liberty. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Wow, so for 12 was, months. Yes, yes. Um. Oh man, and you know we forgot my deployment to Afghanistan. <laughs> Come on, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Um, that was the worst one. That was the worst one. Well, okay, let's finish up with the Iraq deployment. Was it? Or did did you Iraq and then Afghanistan? Iraq. Oh, yes, 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 okay. yes. So, uh, how did that deployment go for you and your company? Uh, it went well. We didn't, uh, you know, we didn't lose anybody. Thankfully, we yeah. did have a lot of convoy missions, but um, luckily, we everything went well. Didn't lose any people. Didn't lose any equipment. So, Golly. yes. What were you thinking when you stepped off the plane? <laughs> oh, I was scared shitless. You're sure, right? I, I was like, please God, help me bring everybody home. Especially was, in 04. It's still an unknown situation in 04. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nerve wracking in charge of all these people leaving my kids my kids were three and five. Oh wow uh so it was uh yeah that was some did you have uh, uh forgive me for asking this might be naive sure. but did you have any incoming into liberty 
We did. We did have a couple more coming into Liberty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but we were, but we were okay. Yeah. 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 So you, you get back and then in, did you say 08? A couple of years later. Yes. We went to, I was actually reared. I was rear D for a while and I actually volunteered to go to Afghanistan. Good for you. I know. I, want, I couldn't stand. I, I was the CA, I was a CAO and the CNO, and that was a lot for me. Yeah. And I was like, I need Jeez. to go. I need to yeah. go. I let, me go to, let me go to the war zone so I can have less work. Oh, <laughs> oh, I was so bad. So I, I, I went over there, but I didn't go for as long. I just, I needed, I just needed to feel a, a sense of purpose for myself. Yeah, I don't know. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But the unit did lose uh, over 30 and that was very difficult. What unit me. did you join over there? Uh, were you part of? I was with the um, uh, third third brigade first. I first. Oh my god! <gasps> How did I forget? Ah, I was with Task Force Duke. It was third third for third brigade first ID. Oh okay. okay. First AD. First AD. And, um, yeah, their mission was definitely, uh, it was a lot different. Uh, we had, we had soldiers in nine different provinces. Oh, wow. Um, we, uh, they, yeah, they did a lot of things that I didn't get a chance to see. Uh, but the amount of soldiers that they lost was just, was a lot and I didn't know how to handle it. And yeah. Yeah. it just took a toll on me for, for. For where sure. did you, where were you located at? On Jalalabad. So we were on an airfield. Oh, but you no. couldn't leave. <laughs> no, of course not. But they're having uh, lost soldier ceremonies. Yeah. That everybody's attending. God, yeah. lady, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't, I, it's not like they prepare you for that kind of thing. I no. just, because no. I'm a very emotional person, I was like, I, I don't know how to deal with it. And you couldn't go anywhere because you lived 50 no. feet from the talk. And then, you know, it's like, right, right. where do you go to escape? You can't go home. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Jeez. so yeah. I, I can see where <clears throat> the mental health aspect of what you do now really, yes. I, I don't know if it had a origins there but at least uh, maybe it was an impetus there to yes. try to help some other people yes yes it all ties into uh, um, years and years of holding in yeah all those feelings it's like yeah <laughs> too many years well and it, you know it, i i don't know what the solve is uh because the army constantly tries to do better Right. You know, I mean, Jesus, at least we're doing more than we did for the Vietnam vets. You know, oh, God. Or any of yes. Those guys. And, exactly. So at exactly. least they're trying. Right. But what's briefed at the top doesn't always seem to get executed very well at, you know, when the rubber meets the road, you know. Right. <laughs> and right. that's too bad. And I don't know what the solve is on that. But uh, I think part of it, I think part of it is, the army doesn't prep its soldiers very well beforehand. Right. And they just like, okay, go experience it. Like, you know, all your forefathers have. And then afterwards, we'll see what we can do for you. You know, just like, <laughs> and, and I think because of that, now I don't know if you could give a talk to people and go, look, we're mm-hmm. going to lose some people. You got to get mm-hmm. mentally prepared for that. I don't know if doing a talk like that really would help. But something something's got to improve. So you're right. Thank God you're, right. you're out there with the uh, vehicles that you have, um, and there are a whole lot of other veteran groups that uh, you're linked to that are helping out as well. Right. Yes. Oh man. So, did we miss anything? No, I think that's it now. <laughs> I don't know. You got some more deployments. You got some more. Any? Did you save a life or anything like that? Did you no, forgot to tell me about. That? I did not. I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Major Annette Wittenberger. The it's been a pleasure to get your story and uh, an honor to talk with you. And thank God you're doing all those things that you're doing for all our veterans. I know you're helping. 
I appreciate it. Thank you very much. On behalf of Major Wittenberg, I'd like to thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, please leave a like and a comment and share the podcast with someone else. And as always, make sure to download the next episode for more service origin stories. So until next time, on your feet, this mission.